Well, good day and welcome on this Thanksgiving weekend as we join to worship our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, together. There's a little chorus that goes like this. I will enter his gates with thanksgiving in my heart. I will enter his courts in praise. I will say this is the day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice for he has made me glad. May we rejoice today as we give thanks to our God. Let's join together as we sing, offering our thanks to God. Let's sing.
Let's bow in prayer. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, God of all, ruler and creator of all things, we serve you with gladness, coming into your presence with joyful songs. You are our God. You made us and we are yours. We give thanks to you and we bless your name for you are good. Your loving devotion continues forever, so we need not be apprehensive about what is to come. Your faithfulness endures to all generations. We can walk with confidence into our future, knowing that you withhold no good thing from those who love you. Lord, teach us to offer you a heart of thanksgiving and praise in all our daily experiences of life. Teach us to be joyful always, to pray continually, and to give thanks in all our circumstances. May each one of us have the desire to be like the Apostle Paul who learned contentment in every circumstance. Help us to choose to continually offer you a sacrifice of praise, no matter what our situation. Teach us the power of a grateful heart. Lord, we will give thanks to you because of your righteousness, and we will sing praise to the name of the Lord Most High. O Lord, our Lord, how majestic is your name in all the earth. You have set your glory above the heavens. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Our scripture reading is taken from Psalm 103, and it's a Psalm of David. Praise the Lord, O my soul, all my inmost being, praise his holy name. Praise the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits, who forgives all our sins and heals all your diseases, who redeems your life from the pit and crowns you with love and compassion, who satisfies your desires with good things, so that your youth is renewed like the eagles. The Lord works righteousness and justice for all the oppressed. He made known his ways to Moses, his deeds to the people of Israel. The Lord is compassionate and gracious, slow to anger, abounding in love. He will not always accuse, nor will he harbor his anger forever. He does not treat us as our sins deserve or repay us according to our iniquities. For as high as the heavens are above the earth, so great is his love for those who fear him. As far as the east is from the west, so far has he removed our transgressions from us. As a father has compassion on his children, 
so the Lord has compassion on those who fear him. For he knows how we are formed. He remembers that we are dust. As for man, his days are like grass. He flourishes like a flower of the field. The wind blows over it and it is gone and its place remembers it no more. But from everlasting to everlasting, the Lord's love is with those who fear him and his righteousness with their children's children, with those who keep his covenant and remember to obey his precepts. The Lord has established his throne in heaven and his kingdom rules over all. Praise the Lord, you his angels, you mighty ones who do his bidding, who obey his word. Praise the Lord, all his heavenly hosts, you his servants who do his will. Praise the Lord, all his works, everywhere in his dominion. Praise the Lord, all my soul. The day before Thanksgiving, the story has it that an elderly man in Ontario called his son in Manitoba and said to him, I hate to ruin your day, son, but I have to tell you that your mother and I are divorcing. 45 years of misery is enough. We're sick of each other. So can you please call your sister in Manitoba and tell her. Frantic, the son called his sister, who exploded on the phone. <laughs> they are not getting a divorce, she shouted. I'll take care of this. She called Ontario immediately and said to her father, you are not getting divorced. Don't you do a single thing until I get there. I'm calling my brother back and we'll both be there tomorrow. Until then, don't do a thing. Do you hear me? The man hung up the phone and turned to his wife. Okay, honey, the kids are coming for Thanksgiving and paying for their own flights. <laughs> I thought that uh, we might need a chuckle this Thanksgiving because I know that some families are not able to get together. And it's, it's hard, especially on, uh, on holidays. Thanksgiving Day is, is a day that's marked on our calendars when families and friends usually get together and express thanks for one another and for all the blessings that they have experienced in life. Don't you agree that it is wonderful to have this official day, a holiday, where we're reminded to be thankful. But do we really need to be reminded? Really? Shouldn't we be more thankful more often? Perhaps even every day? Have an attitude of thanks? Or as someone has said, an attitude of gratitude. You know, the Bible is full of verses telling us to be thankful. I want to share just a few with you today. First Chronicles 16, 34. Give thanks to the Lord for he is good. His love endures forever. Thessalonians, First Thessalonians 5, 16 to 18. Rejoice always, pray continually, give thanks in all circumstances, for this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. Philippians 4, 6-7 Do not be anxious about anything, but in every situation, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your requests to God and the peace of God which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Psalm 100, verse 4, Enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. 
Give thanks to him and praise his name. And then last, Psalm 107, 8 and 9. Let them give thanks to the Lord for his unfailing love and his wonderful deeds for mankind. For he satisfies the thirsty and fills the hungry with good things. As God's children, we are to be thankful people. And not just on the official Thanksgiving day, but all days, even at all times. Are you thankful today? Do you have a reason to be thankful? You know, I think we all have reasons, things that we can be thankful for. Maybe circumstances are going really well. Situations have worked out in your favor. Relationships are all on a positive note. <laughs> Good health, food on the table, a roof over your heads. You know, but I'm aware also that there are some listening today who say, well, if you knew my situation and what I'm going through right now, there's no way you would be thankful. Well, first of all, let me say to those of you who find yourselves in this kind of situation, how sorry I am that you're going through such a difficult time. And I'm not belittling your pain. And I hope that there is someone that you can talk to to help you work through your pain. We all go through valleys and they're not fun. So the question may be, can you be thankful when your circumstances and your situations are not in your favor? When relationships are trying, when your health is bad, when your money is low? Is there anything to be thankful for in those tough times? Those times when, when you think you might not make it through? It's hard, isn't it? It's hard because we are human and we tend to focus on our circumstances to make us thankful. If we have what we've asked for, then we're more apt to be grateful, right? But what I think we need to remember is, is that we're just passing through on our way to eternity. That's our goal. Our focus is Jesus Christ. And if we keep our eyes on him and he gives us what we need to get through those times. And if not, if we don't get through them, well, even better because then we'll be with him in eternity. You know, as the Apostle Paul said, to live is Christ, to die is gain. Psalm 103 is a beautiful psalm of praise from David. And if we look at the psalm, we'll see many reasons why we can always be thankful. It's so easy to complain about life. I do it all the time. Ask Jeff. <laughs> it's not fair. My prayers are not answered. I feel like God's forgotten me. I'm worried about COVID and the world situation. Things seem to be out of control, and I don't know what's going to happen. My health isn't good. My kids are driving me crazy. And on and on the list goes. It's important to, to voice our feelings to God. But it's also important to remember that God knows everything. That he sees the big picture that we can't see. And he can bring good out of all our troubles. Learning to be grateful is, is so much more than just our immediate circumstances. 
We can't let what's going on in our lives determine the level of thanksgiving in our lives. So what do we have to be thankful for when we're going through rough times? How about that which is most important? That which is to mean the most to us. That which is to have first place in our lives. God himself. Our thankfulness can always be for God and for his character. He is our constant. He never changes. We are to focus on God and his goodness and offer our gratitude to him for who he is and for all that he has done for us. He might not change the circumstances we're going through, but he will be with us through them. In Psalm 103, we see David telling his soul to count its blessings and to praise the Lord. He's reminding himself as he praises God of all that God has done. Maybe we need to spend some time doing that ourselves. You know, nowhere in this entire psalm do we see a request or a plea to God to do something. It's all praise, every bit of it. My goodness, I wonder how long we could talk to God and not ask him for something. Hmm. <laughs> David was counting his blessings as he looked at his life, and instead of complaining about his burdens, he was praising God. He realized, you know, just how much God had done for him. He realized how good God had been and how undeserving he was for all of these blessings. And as a result of this awareness, he penned this song, this prayer of praise, which is, expresses his attitude of gratitude toward the Lord. Praising and thanking God, you know, was not something that David did only in the temple during religious ceremonies. It was part of his everyday life. He was grateful to the Lord, and he couldn't help but praise him. David goes on, and he gives us a good list of things, of promises to praise God for. God forgives our sins, heals our diseases, redeems us from death. He crowns us with love and compassion satisfies our desires. He gives righteousness and justice. And you know, we receive all these things and more without deserving any of them. Recently, I asked a group of ladies to share what they knew about God from the Bible and from their own personal experiences with him. And we had a lot of adjectives to describe God. Listen to some of their answers. God is faithful, forgiving, merciful, strength, omniscient, omniscient, omnipresent. God is our savior. He is almighty. He is creator. He is the great I am. He is a friend and a comforter. He is a protector and a rock, our refuge and our shepherd, our father, our helper. God is love. Arthur Pink says this, he says, Everything about God is great, vast, incomparable. He never forgets. He never fails. He never falters. 
He never forfeits his word. And you know, this great God loves us. He loves you and he wants a relationship with you. He forgives you and he wants you to come to the point in your life where you realize that he is all you need, that he is enough for you. I wanna share a dialogue with you this morning or this afternoon or this evening, whenever you're listening. And it's uh, from the book, Becoming a Woman Whose God is Enough by Cynthia Heald. And Jeff is gonna read it with me. And uh, just listen to the words as God speaks to his child. My child, do you know that I am enough for you? What do you mean, Father? Am I the first one you turn to when you have a need? Do you feel incomplete without me? Do you love me more than life? Are you content? Am I your shepherd, whom you follow and trust for all things needful? Why, Father, I want to say yes, but I know all too well how easy it is for me to rely upon myself, others, or the world to satisfy my desires. I want you to understand the great love I have for you, love expressed by the cross. I did not spare my own son in order to bring you into a deep abiding relationship with me, a relationship that is precious in my sight and is the only one that can fully satisfy your soul. Since I gave my son, will I not also with him freely give you all things? All my dealings with you are meant to teach you that I am enough. Yes, Lord, I know. You long to be gracious to me in every way, and I know that in you alone can I find fulfillment. What is necessary for you to follow? What is necessary for you to allow me to be all that I want to be in your life? I'm not sure, Father, but I want to. I want to know. I want to learn. You have my attention. I hinder your work in my life when I live independently. I want you to be enough. I am weary, weary from continually searching for completeness and contentment on my own. My prayer will be for understanding that all your dealings with me are for the purpose of teaching me your sufficiency. Good. Your desire to be taught and to grow in dependence is all important. Now take my hand and let me guide you into my fullness in order for you to discover that indeed I am enough. Let us pray. Lord, may this be our prayer, that we too would know that you are our everything and that you are enough. And God, may we continually be grateful for all that you are and all that you have done for us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I want to thank you all for joining with me this Thanksgiving weekend. And I pray God's blessing upon you for this week as you um, celebrate Thanksgiving, either alone with those in your household or with your small extended family or friends. And I just pray God's blessing upon each of you. And I want to share this benediction as we close our service today. It says, May the eyes of your heart be open to all the blessings which surround you. May this awareness produce a harvest of generosity in your spirit. May thankfulness rise up within you, not just during this short season, but day after day from the early morning watch until you retire for the night. May your prayers reflect gratitude while also acknowledging the needs of others whose situations are so drastically different. May thoughts of Jesus fill your mind 
and thanksgiving be your response. God bless.